Hello and welcome to Mad Make It Easy Special. All right, tell me, what is it that we can do in three minutes flat? In just three minutes? Hmm, we can make a sandwich. Maybe even to pack your school bag, you wouldn't take more than three minutes. In three minutes, I could finish an ice cream cone and that too, a double scoop. Wow, what else could there be? Tell me, do you know that in just three minutes, you can complete any of the makes that you see on the show? And in today's episode, we will go around the world. Our first stop will be with a group of tribals, where we will work with feathers. We will make a Chinese painting with bamboo reeds. Then using the sumegashi technique, we will capture some interesting forms. And in the big picture, we will be taking on a sumo wrestler. All this on MAD, make it easy special. What do you think of when you see these? I know, I know, get up in the morning, brush your teeth, brush your teeth before going to bed, brush it after having a snack and the more you use your toothbrush, it wears out and you have to get a new one. But as you know on MAD, we recycle everything and this becomes an art tool. I had used a toothbrush to make some feathers using a very simple technique and today we are going to give that technique a new twist to make an amazing looking quill. But that's later. First, let's see how we can make some simple looking feathers. Rob! Rob! Do all tribals live in the jungle? No, not all of them, but most do. And they depend on the jungle for their homes, for their food, and even for their clothes and accessories. For instance, as soon as they find feathers, they use them creatively to make their headgear. So today, I am going to show you how to make feathers out of paper using a very simple technique. So let's begin. First of all, let's take an A4 sheet and then another strip of paper like this. And then we take a toothbrush, dip it in water and then put some paint on it. Then with our toothbrush, we make some diagonal strokes. The strokes should be as firm as possible and not very long. Now we do that on the other side as well. We leave a little gap in the center for the spine of the feather. You could add another color if you like. We next draw the outline with a little spine. Then we cut out the shape. Now for some detailing, we make a few diagonal cuts. We bend it a little, ruffle up the edges. Doesn't that look like a real feather? And in this way, you can make a whole lot of feathers of different shapes and sizes. Take a look. And you can use these creatively to make headgears for yourself. I'll show you what I mean. Wow! Amazing! Isn't it? And if you want to use your feathers to make headgear, then the technique is really quite simple. Take a feather like this and attach a stick along the back with some sticky tape. Then you fix it onto your headgear. Mm. Isn't that simple? Yes. yes. So this is a gift to you both, very specially from me. <laughs> Thank you. So did you see? It's so easy to make realistic looking feathers with a simple toothbrush. Now we shall combine our feathers with a pen refill to see what we get. So let's go right ahead. I've got some photo paper here with me. The last time we had used charred paper and created some feathers out of it. This time we shall be using photo paper because photo paper is a little glossy and shiny so your feathers will also have a little bit of a sheen. The technique of making the feathers is the same as before. I've already made some here. I've painted them with a toothbrush. You can see the simple strokes just like I had shown you earlier. After that, I cut out some diagonal lines so that the edges look something like this. The last time we had stuck a bamboo stick behind it but this time we shall stick a copper wire. We'll use a little sticky tape. And very neatly, we stick the copper wire in the exact center. Make sure it's exactly in the center so that it forms the spine, like this. Now, in what we are about to make, we shall use the refill of a pen because we'd like to make an amazing looking quill. So, we shall want to bend the feathers a little like this to make the shape look a little more interesting. 
You can work with different sizes. The shapes can be broad or narrow as you like so that your quill looks really great. Okay, so our feathers are all ready. So first of all, we take our pen refill. I've got the refill of a ballpoint pen here with me and I've also got some bamboo sticks, not very large. Now we attach the ballpoint pen refill to the bamboo sticks. The bamboo sticks are quite soft on the inside. Sometimes they can even be hollow so you can very easily make a hole in them and then you can insert your pen refill into it like this as far as you would like to. It went in quite easily. Now this looks almost like a pen itself but I told you we are going to be making an amazing looking quill and it doesn't look amazing just as yet. So now I've got some thread here with me which I shall wrap around the bamboo stick. Okay so now I have covered my bamboo stick nicely with the thread. So the stick is already looking a little more interesting. What we shall do next is to attach our feathers to it. We hold it here like this and tie it with the thread. Then take another one. And once you have wrapped it nicely with the thread, you can seal it with some glue. So it stays firm permanently and the feathers don't fall off. Okay, so our feathers are all fixed. As you can see, our quill is almost ready. This portion here is the base and these of course are our feathers. If you like, you can turn it into a character. For instance, we have used white and red feathers here at the top. So I shall convert it into a rooster for which I shall have to do the following. I've got some beads here with me. We take one of them, stick it on here and this will form the rooster head. Then if you like, you could cut out a piece of mount board to make a beak or maybe even a crown and finish it off with paints, just like I have done here. Now I've made myself a rooster and you can make whatever bird you like. You can decide according to the colors you use to paint your feathers and give your bird that special look. In this case, I used a bead to make its head. I used tiny bits of mount board to make its crown and the beak I made with toothpicks. And so our amazing quill is completely ready. Now not only do you know how to make a realistic looking feather but a cool looking pen. Now it's time for a break but don't go away because after the break we will be bringing down the bamboo reed painting technique from China and from Japan the marble paper technique and after that in the big picture we take on a huge sumo wrestler. Hiya! Welcome back to MAD, make it easy special. Don't worry, I'm not going to be showing you any martial arts. But are you guys aware that besides martial arts, the Chinese use bamboo even for their paintings. And the main style in Chinese paintings and script are its distinctive strokes. To make these paintings, the Chinese use specialized tools. For instance, bamboo reeds, a calligraphy pen and a brush pen. I too had shown you how to make Chinese paintings with bamboo reeds. But today I'm going to show you a new variation on the same theme. But before that, let's have a look at this. Today I'm going to show you ancient technique that the Chinese used for painting. They did not use things like brushes. They only used what? Bamboo reeds. First of all, we take an earbud and wet the paper a little. The reason I'm wetting the paper is when I apply my colors, they will spread a little. Wanna see how? Yes. Okay. Do you see? If you like, you could draw the image first and then color it. I'm using handmade paper here because the color spreads very nicely on it. Can you see it happening? For my coloring, I'm using photo inks. You could use watercolors if you like, but photo inks are very bright and they spread nice and even. 
Now we take our special tool, a bamboo stick. I have sharpened it a bit at one end so that it works like the nib of a pen. We dip it in like this and then we make our strokes. Has anyone figured out what I'm painting as yet? Birds and a tree. Very good, very good. So do you see how we can get nice bold strokes here and thin strokes as well? Since this is a small bird, it gets a small beak. And the bamboo sticks you could get from a nursery if you like. Nice thin ones like these. Or you could pluck them out from your broom at home as well. Then again, you could use a refill from an old ballpoint pen. Just slice it a little bit at the end and it becomes a painting tool. Okay, our painting is ready. Now I'll show you another cool trick. With bamboo reeds, you can also write like how Chinese people write. Our painting is complete. Now let's frame it. The final touch. So did you see how simple the technique is to create a Chinese painting? We just made a painting with a brush and added the details with a bamboo reed. But now I'd like to show you a variation on the same technique. I've got here with me a sheet of mount board and a little tumbler of black ink in which I added a little water to dilute it. I've also got some bamboo reeds which are quite large and thick which I have sharpened at the edge so that they form the nib of a pen. But since the area here at the end is larger, the strokes that we will get will also be large. I shall draw them and show you what I mean. I dip my bamboo reed in ink. You can see we are getting a very soft kind of look and that's because I have diluted the ink with water. And the strokes are pretty much like a brush stroke. So you don't really have need for a regular brush. You can use the bamboo reed to fill in this entire area. As you can see, I have made a quite a large form out here and these are its extensions. I'm actually drawing an eagle. If you'd like to fill in a larger area, then this is what you do. You take your bamboo reed and place it in such a way that its surface is in complete contact with the sheet of paper. Like this. And pull it like this so that you get nice long strokes. Then if you would like to add in some detailing, then you dip your pen in the ink once again and use just one point of the edge to give you nice and clean lines like this. If you'd like darker strokes, then you use the ink directly. And like I mentioned earlier, the main style in Chinese paintings and Chinese script is their strokes. So all the area that we are filling in here, we are not giving it a flat application like a brush. We are giving it strokes and are trying to create our complete form and trying to bring out all the colors. In this way, you could try as many variations as you like. If you want a thick coat, then you add a little more ink in here. If you'd like to give it a dry brush effect, then without dipping it in ink, if you pull the reed along, then you get almost dry brush like strokes. Now let's try using a fine nib. So if you want to show some detailing in your form, then you could do that. You could draw straight lines quite easily. You could even write something if you like. Okay, so our Chinese painting is nice and ready. And as you saw, we did not need to use a brush at all. Whatever area we required to fill, no matter how dense, we used only bamboo reeds. We even did the wings with our bamboo reeds, even down to the finer details which we also did with just bamboo reeds. And just like I have drawn an eagle out here, if you would like to, you could make any other bird or animal. In Chinese painting, they use the same technique to draw mountains, a house or a waterfall. So go ahead and try it. All you need are just bamboo sticks. Now let's add our finishing touch to it. I love to see the patterns that colors form in water because you can never predict what forms will appear. And using the same characteristics, we had created Sumigashi paintings. 
But can you control the patterns that colors form in water? Maybe you can. And that I will share with you after you watch simple Sumigashi painting. Sumigashi originated in China approximately 2000 years ago. But around the 12th century, it grew very popular in Japan and it is still a very important part of Japanese culture. So first of all, we take a little bowl and squeeze in some oil color. We then mix in a little bit of turpentine, just about half a cup. This turpentine oil is called Artist Turpentine and is available at any stationery store. Now we mix the color nicely so that we don't have any lumps. We next take a tub and fill it about one fourth full with water and we pour our color mixture into it. We stir it about with a straw or we can even blow on it. Our patterns are already beginning to form. We then take a paper and float it lightly on the water. Wow! Do you see what interesting patterns we get on the paper? Wow! Mm. We put this aside to dry. And similarly, we can try this with two or three colors. You can even decorate the paper by sticking some petals on it and that's how you use this technique to make sumegashi paper. Wow! Isn't it? And using this very technique, you can make a whole array of color combinations and flowing patterns on your paper. And you can even bind them together to make a nice book mm, like this. Wow. You can use this book to write in or stick your photographs in. And I have already created a whole bunch of articles out here. I'm sure you enjoyed the sumigashi painting technique because it's so simple and we get so many colorful patterns so easily. I had promised that I would share with you such a technique that would help us control these random patterns. I've got here with me a cartridge sheet on which I have cut out stencil. I have cut out the shape of a t-shirt and shorts and at the bottom I've cut out a circle which I shall use to make a ball. And under this I have placed a clean cartridge sheet so that when we get our print it appears only in this stenciled area. And I have folded the sheet so that we can use a different color here and another color on the other side. Okay, so I've got two trays with water in them on the table. I have mixed some oil color in turpentine in this bowl. Okay, so now let's get our print. Okay, so as you can see, I used a green shade for the bottom half of the print. So in the shorts and the ball, we have got a green pattern. And for the t-shirt, we have got a real nice red pattern. So in this manner, just as you design your stencil, your color will fill in exactly in that area. So in a way, we are actually controlling these random patterns. And after this, if you like, you can add any kind of extensions or detailing to make it even more interesting. Now let's take a marker and add in some detail to see who's wearing this t-shirt and shorts. He's got a football in front of him. So let's give him some football shoes. Okay, so using a marker, I have added in a whole lot of detail and our football player is completely ready. And you can use this technique to create whatever you like. All you have to remember is, whatever design you wish to create, you will need to cut out a stencil first and then use the sumegashi technique to make the print so that it looks as colorful and interesting as this. Okay, so this one is complete. Finishing touch, our frame. So you saw how we can use the sumegashi technique to control the patterns we make. You should definitely try it. It's a lot of fun. Alright, now I'd like to take a break because I have to prepare for something really big coming our way in our big picture. Yes, that's right, the sumo wrestler. Don't miss it.
welcome back to MAD. In our next big picture, we had the privilege to meet a really big visitor. That too from Japan. Can you think who? A sumo wrestler. He decided to challenge me. Although he was big in size, I wasn't afraid of him because I've got... And do you know who won? Watch this. Let's go! Thanks guys, I can handle him on my own. He's a little bigger in size. What he doesn't know is I've got... Ah! Ta -ta 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 -ta. 